Category O, Lecture 32, Auslander Regularity. Let us start with describing the associative setup for the definition of Auslander regular algebras. Let K be an algebraically closed field and A a finite dimensional and associative K algebra. Let L1, L2, and so on Ln be a complete and irredundant list of representatives of isomorphism classes of simple A modules. We denote by Pi the indecomposable projective cover of Li and by Ii the indecomposable injective envelope of Li. Until further notice, we assume that A has finite global dimension. Denote by I dot upper I a minimal injective co-resolution of Pi and by P dot upper I a minimal projective resolution of Ii. Note that both I dot upper I and P dot upper I are finite complexes. This is because of our assumptions that A has finite global dimension. Consider also the ser functor S of the bounded derived category of A mode, which is given as the left derived of the tensor product over A with the dual by module A dual. So now we can define Auslander regular algebras. Definition, we say that A is Auslander regular, provided that the projective dimension of the case homological component of i dot upper i is at most k for all k and for all i. For example, consider the pass algebra of the following Dinkin quiver. So we have the type An quiver oriented uniformly. Note that the projective module P1 coincides with the injective module In, in particular it is projective injective and the projective dimension of In thus is zero. The projective resolution of the injective module Ii, when I is not equal to n, looks as follows. The projective cover of Ii is P1, and the kernel of the subjection map is Pi plus 1. So in particular, the projective dimension of Ii is 1 for each i different from n. Dually, the injective co-resolution of Pi for i different from 1 looks as follows. Pi is a submodule of In, and the co-kernel of this embedding is i, i minus 1. So, and in this resolution, we see that the projective dimension of In is 0, so this is a 0 component of the resolution, and in the homological position 1, the projective dimension of i, i minus 1 is exactly 1 by this computation. Consequently, this algebra is Auslander regular, directly from the definition. Let us now discuss some basic properties of Auslander regular algebras. Property number one, if A is Auslander regular, then it has a non-zero projective injective module. Indeed, the projective dimension of the zero homological component of any i dot i should be at most zero, which means that it must be a projective module. This proves our observation. Property number two, which is known as Auslander theorem. If A is Auslander regular, then A op is Auslander regular. So the reference for this statement is theorem 3.7 in the book by Fossum, Griffith and Drayton, Trivial extensions of abelian categories, homological algebra of trivial extensions of abelian categories with applications to ring theory from 75. So property two has the following corollary. If A is Auslander regular, then the injective dimension of the minus case homological component of Pi is at most K for all K and I. Proof. The usual vector space duality maps projective resolutions in A mode to injective co-resolutions in A op mode and vice versa. So this corollary follows directly from the left-right symmetry of the definition of Auslander regular algebras as established by Auslander's theorem. Now let us discuss the notion of a grade of a module. 
given a left A module M, the grade of M is defined as the minimal value of the degree K for which there is a non-zero extension of degree K from M to A. An alternative description of the grade is as follows. The grade of M is the minimal value of K such that the minus case homology of the image of M under the ser functor is non-zero. Proof, if we apply the ser functor to the home space in the bounded derived category from M to A shifted by K, we will get the home space from S of M to S of A shifted by K. But S of A is an injective cogenerator of A mode, and therefore homing into an injective cogenerator exactly detects the homology of the complex S of M. And this implies immediately this alternative description. A small observation, the grade of M is bounded by the projective dimension of M. Indeed, the identity map on the last non-zero term of a minimal projective resolution of M cannot be factored through the penultimate term of this resolution because all maps in a minimal projective resolution are radical maps. Therefore, this identity map gives rise to a non-zero extension from M into the projective module. And the, the degree of this extension is exactly the projective dimension of M. Note that here we use that A has finite global dimension for this argument. Okay, let us consider the same example as before. We consider the path algebra of the uniformly oriented Dinkin quiver of type AN. So here are the projective resolutions of simples. So the simple module LN is projective, and so its projective resolution is itself. And for I smaller than N, the simple module LI has projective cover PI, and the kernel of this surjection is exactly P i plus one. Applying the ser functor to these projective resolutions, we get that the simple module Ln is mapped to the injective module I n, and so its grade is zero. And the simple module L i is mapped to the following complex. So the injective module I i plus one, so this is the homological position minus one. So this is mapped to I i, and this is mapped to zero. So this map is surjective. So this complex has homology Li plus one in homological position minus one. It follows that the grade of Li is equal to one and is equal to the projective dimension of Li for each i smaller than n. Okay, let us now go to the category O setup. So let G be a semi-simple finite dimensional complex Lie algebra with a fixed triangular decomposition into the direct sum of the negative part and minus, the Cartan subalgebra H, and the positive part and plus. Let W be the wild group of G, and O the bernstein gilfand gilfand category associated to this triangular decomposition. Let O0 be the principal block of O. We know that O0 is equivalent to the category of modules over some finite dimensional associative algebra, which until further notice we denote by A. And we have the following families of structural A modules. All of them are indexed by the elements in the while group. So we have the simple modules LW, the indecomposable projective modules PW, the indecomposable injective modules IW, the standard modules delta W, the co-standard modules nabla w, and the indecomposable tilting modules T w. So now we can discuss Auslander regularity of O0. Theorem, due to Han Kyung Ko, Raphael Mujen, and myself, the algebra A is Auslander regular. So this theorem has an immediate corollary that all blocks of category O are Auslander regular. Proof of the corollary. By Zergil's combinatorial description, it is enough to consider integral blocks. For singular blocks, we can use projective functors to obtain injective resolutions of singular projective 
projective modules from injective resolutions of regular projective modules. Since projective functor sends projectives to projectives, injectives to injectives, and do not increase projective dimension, the Auslander regularity condition for singular blocks follows directly from the Auslander regularity condition for regular blocks. The reference for this theorem is the paper Some Homological Properties of Category O, Part 6, from January this year. Here is an SL2 example. Consider the Lie algebra SL2, in which case the while group consists of two elements, E and S. So here are projective and injective modules in O0. The injective module for E has Sokol E in degree 0 and top S in degree minus 1. The projective module for S is isomorphic to the injective module for S up to the shift of grading. So it has top S, Sokol S, and the middle part E. And the projective module for E is just dual to the injective module for E. So here is the injective resolution of PE. So PE embeds into a shift of IS. The co-kernel is S. It again embeds into a shift of IS. And then the next co-kernel is IE. So it's a resolution of length 2, it has three non-zero components. The ones which are in degree 0 and 1 are projective injective and has have projective in dimension 0. And the injective module in the homological position 2 has projective dimension 2 using the simple preserving duality. So this shows that the Auslander regularity condition is satisfied for this algebra. In order to prove the theorem, we need to recall several things from the previous lectures. Recall that we have Lustig's A function, which is defined on the while group with non-negative integer values, and let W0 be the longest element in W. In the previous lecture, we saw that the projective dimension of the indecomposable tilting module Tw equals A of W. And the projective dimension of the indecomposable injective module Iw equals A of W0, W. Here is a small reduction observation. To establish our slender regularity for O0, it is enough to consider the injective co-resolution of the dominant projective module. So it is enough to prove that the projective dimension of i sub k upper e is at most k for all k. Indeed, we can obtain all other projective modules applying projective functors to the dominant projective module. And projective functors, they send injective modules to injective modules, and they don't increase the projective dimension. So if we could check the Auslander regularity condition for the injective co-resolution of the dominant projective module, we can apply projective functors to this resolution, note that it doesn't increase projective dimension, and conclude that the Auslander regularity condition holds for the image of this projective functor. And this would complete the proof for the whole category O. Now let us try to prove the theorem. So we divide the proof into three parts. So here is the first part. The dominant projective module has a minimal tilting co-resolution. Let's denote it by T dot upper E. And we know that this tilting co-resolution is actually a linear complex of tilting modules. By the ringel kosul cell duality of O, the category of bounded linear complexes of tilting modules is equivalent to the graded version of O0. And this duality maps delta W to delta W0, W inverse W0. Therefore, the complex T dot upper E is the dominant standard object in the category of linear complexes of tilting modules. We know how composition subquotients of the dominant Verma module look like. So if delta E has a composition subquotient LW shifted by K, 
then this means that minus k should be between the a value of the w and the length of w. So this follows directly from the kajdan lewis combinatorics. Translating this to the category of linear complexes of tilting modules, we see that if some indecomposable tilting module Tw is a summand in some component Tk upper E, then K should be between A of W0, W inverse W0 and the length of W0, W inverse W0. Also note that A of W equals A of W0, W inverse W0 and similarly for the lengths. Consequently, it followed that the projective dimension of each tk upper e is at most k for any position k. Second part of the proof. Let us now denote by t dot upper w the minimal tilting co-resolution of pw. Now, we don't claim that this is a linear complex of tilting modules, but this complex can be obtained from t dot upper e using projective functors. So we use projective functors and then we clean up the resulting complex using the homotopy. So since projective functors do not increase projective dimension, we obtain that the projective dimension of the component Tk, upper W, is at most k for any k and any w. Furthermore, we can even say the following. If Tx appears in some Tk upper w, then w0 w is left greater than or equal to x. Proof. So the component Tk upper w is produced using theta w. So this means that Tx must be a summand of some theta w applied to Ty for some y. The module theta w applied to Ty can be written as theta w after theta w0 y applied to Tw0. And any summand theta z of theta w after theta w0 y satisfies the condition that that is left greater than or equal to w. And applying w0, we get that w0 w is left greater than or equal than w0 z. Application of theta z to Tw0 produces Tw0z. And so our x is equal to W0z, and we have the inequality which we wanted. Now let us go to the completion of the proof. Let us take this consequence and apply the twisting functor Tw0. So Tw0, it maps tilting modules to injectives and projective modules to tiltings. So we get the following claim. If I W0x appears in an injective co-resolution of T W0W, then W0W is left greater than or equal to X. And in this formula, we know that the projective dimension of I W0x is exactly two times A of X. Next observation. If Tx appears in some Tk upper W, then K should be greater than or equal to a of x. Proof, if we assume that k is smaller than a of x and tx appears in tk upper w, then the projective dimension of tx should be at most k, which is smaller than a of x. And this is a contradiction. This has the following corollary. If i w0 x appears in an injective co-resolution of t w0 w, then the corresponding position in which this IW0x appears is at least a of x. So this is obtained from this observation applying TW0. Now we can prove our main result. To obtain an injective co-resolution of PE, we take the tilting co-resolution of PE and co-resolve each tilting TW0W appearing in this tilting co-resolution by injective modules. The module IW0x can appear at least in position A of x for some TW0w. However, the later module appears at least in position A of W0w in T dot upper E. 
and we have the inequality that W0W is left greater than or equal to X. In particular, the value of the A function on W0W is greater than or equal to the value of the A function on X. So taking this into account and this, we get that the injective module IW0X can appear in position at least 2 A of X. And this is exactly what is necessary for Auslander regularity. Now let us move to Auslander regularity of parabolic category O. Let us fix a parabolic subalgebra P of G, which contains the Borel subalgebra H plus N plus. Consider the corresponding parabolic category OP and its principal block OP0. Let WP be the parabolic subgroup of W corresponding to P and denote by A upper P the associative algebra of OP0. Recall that AP is quasi-hereditary, in particular it has finite global dimension, so it fits into our setup. Theorem by Han Kuhn, Graphen, and myself, AP is Auslander regular. And an immediate corollary of the theorem, all blocks of the parabolic category O are Auslander regular. And this corollary is proved similarly to the corresponding statement for the usual category O. Applying projective functors, we can reduce the statement to the principal block. So for singular parabolic blocks, we can apply projective functors and obtain Auslander regularity from the Auslander regularity for the principal parabolic block. So here's the idea of the proof of the Auslander regularity of parabolic category O. So the proof is basically similar to that for O0. By parabolic singular Cossul duality, the Cossul dual of the parabolic block OP0 is the singular block O lambda P, where lambda P is an integral and singular weight with dot stabilizer WP. We know that both O0P and O lambda P are Ringel self dual. In particular, the minimal tilting co-resolution of the dominant parabolic Verma module is linear and is the dominant standard object in the corresponding category of linear complexes of parabolic tilting modules. And the latter category is the graded version of the singular block. So we know the graded simple composition subquotients of the dominant singular Verma module. And actually, we also know projective dimension of parabolic tilting modules. The values of the projective dimension of parabolic tilting modules can be found in my paper with Kevin, some homological properties of category O, part 4. And combining all this together, similarly as for the usual category O, we have Auslander regularity of the parabolic category. Here's an SL3 example. So consider the algebra SL3, then the while group consists of EAM, S, TEAM, ST, TS, and W0. So let us choose the parabolic subalgebra such that WP consists of E and S. Then we have already seen many times the projective modules in O0P. So PE has top E and SOCL S. PT is projective injective with top T and SOCL T and E and TS in the middle. And PTS is projective injective with top TS, SOCL TS, and T in the middle. So in particular, two of these projectives are injectives. So the only interesting thing for Auslander regularity, of course, is the injective co-resolution of PE. And the injective co-resolution of PE looks as follows. So we can embed PE into PT. The co-kernel embeds into PTS. The co-kernel is TS, again embeds into PTS, and the co-kernel TS and T embeds into PT, and the new co-kernel is IE. So this is a long resolution of length 4, so the, the injective dimension of PE is 4. However, all middle terms of this resolution, except for the extreme term IE, so they all are projective injective. So the same resolution can be viewed also as the uh, projective resolution of the indecomposable injective module IE. 
So in particular, it follows that the projective dimension of IE is equal to the injective dimension of PE. And so the outstanding regularity condition is clear. Finally, let us discuss a slight generalization of this. Let us now relax the condition that the global dimension of A is finite. Recall that a finite dimensional algebra A is called Gornstein, provided that the projective dimension of an injective cogenerator of A mod is finite. In particular, any algebra of finite global dimension is Gorenstein. Definition, a Gorenstein algebra A is called Auslander Gorenstein, provided that the projective dimension of I k upper I is at most k for all k and I. A trivial example, of course, that any self-injective algebra is both Gorenstein and Auslander Gorenstein. Further, any Auslander regular algebra is Auslander Gornstein. A less trivial example is that the tensor product of an Auslander regular algebra and a self injective algebra is Auslander Gornstein. And the reason for that is the fact that the resolution for such a tensor product, so if we resolve projective, injective, and so on modules, the resolution is obtained simply by tensoring the resolutions of the factors. And so all conditions are very easily derived. Finally, let us discuss as subcategories in O. Recall that we have fixed the parabolic subalgebra P of G. Consider the set of the longest coset representatives of WP in W, where WP acts on the left. Recall that the S subcategory S P0 of O0 is defined as the full subcategory of O0, which consists of all modules M, having a two-step presentation by projective modules in which each indecomposable summand is of the form PW, where W is the longest coset representative from the cosets which we fixed above. Recall that the S subcategory SP0 is equivalent to the category of modules over the algebra EAE, where A is the algebra of O0, and E is the idempotent in A, which corresponds to this choice of simple modules given by the longest coset representatives. And we have seen that EAE is properly stratified and that its tilting modules are co-tilting. So in particular, it follows that all co-standard modules have finite projective dimensions. So since co-tilting modules are tilting, they have finite projective dimension, and co-standard modules can be resolved by cotilting modules, so they also have finite projective dimension. Consequently, AEA is a Gorenstein algebra, because all injective modules have co-standard filtration. So they also have finite projective dimension. Theorem, due to Han Kyung, Raphael and myself, SOP is Auslander Gorenstein. And similarly to the previous cases, this implies that all blocks of S subcategories in O are Auslander Gorenstein. Before we can discuss the proof, let us recall that the category SP0 is a ser quotient of O0. And we have the corresponding exact quotient functor denoted by phi. So we know that the indecomposable projectives in the S subcategory are of the form phi of PW, where W is the longest coset representative. And similarly, the indecomposable injectives are of the form phi of IW, where W is the longest coset representative. So if you consider the set of shortest coset representatives in the cosets of W modulo WP acting on the left, then we also know that the indecomposable tilting modules in SOP are of the form phi of TW, where W is now a shortest coset representative. So now here is a sketch of the proof of Auslander regularity of S subcategories in O. It is not difficult to check that the projective resolution in O of any tilting module Tx, where X is the shortest coset representative, or any injective module R iy, where y is the longest coset representative, 
contains only PW, where W is the longest cosage representative. And using the simple preserving duality from this, it follows that the injective co-resolution of any tilting for the shortest cosage representative and any projective for the longest cosage representative contains only injectives for the longest cosage representatives. For detail, I refer to my paper with Elin, essential orders on stratified algebras with duality and as subcategories in O. So after this observation, we can simply apply our main result. Take a longest cosage representative. Take an injective resolution of the corresponding projective module. So since the usual category O is Auslander regular, the injective modules appearing in this resolution satisfy the Auslander regularity property. So we can apply our quotient functor phi to it, and we obtain an injective co-resolution of phi of PW. And the Auslander regularity property from the definition is preserved. End of proof. Here is an SL3 example. Consider SL3, so the W is E, S, T, S, T, T, S, and W0, and let P be such that W, P is E and S. In this case, the longest cosage representatives are S, S, T, and W0. And of course, the injective for W0 is the same as a projective for W0, and this is also the tilting module for E. So the tilting co-resolution for PS looks as follows. So PS is embedded into TE and the quotient is TT. And the injective co-resolution of TT looks as follows. TT is embedded in IW0 and the quotient is IS. So combining the two, we have that the injective co-resolution of PS looks as follows. So PS is a submodule of IW0. This is this one. Then this embeds into IW0, this one, and finally this projects onto IS. And again, the same complex we can view as a projective resolution of IS because these two terms are projective injective. And then if we apply phi to all this, we get the Auslander regularity property for the S subcategory, which is fairly straightforward. Okay, let us finish with some questions for PhD students. Question number one, verify that the radical square zero quotient of the pass algebra of the uniformly oriented type A n Dinkin Quiver is Auslander regular. Question two, construct explicit minimal tilting co-resolutions of all indecomposable projective modules in all integral blocks of O for SL3. Question three, Construct explicit minimal injective co-resolutions of all indecomposable projective modules in all integral blocks of O for SL3. Question 4. Compute all homologies of the images of simples under the SER functor in all integral blocks of O for SL3 and hence determine the grades of these simple modules. And finally, question 5. Prove with all details that the tensor product of an Auslander regular algebra and the self-injective algebra is Auslander-Gornstein. Thank you very much.